This is Jamie with Stonemaier Games, and today is, as always, an exciting day on e-newsletter day because we have lots of fun stuff to announce and talk about, news to share, speculation, of course, and uh, yeah, yeah, lots going on today. I have a link to today's e-newsletter, in case you don't subscribe, in uh, the description of the video here, so you can check that out. Um, and I'll be going over that probably a couple times in today's uh, live cast to talk about various topics. Behind me, I have Walter right there and Biddy. Biddy's right there. You can kind of see Biddy's butt right there. They're joining me for today's live cast. They won't have much to say, but they are here to hear what you have to say. So let me know if you have any questions while we're while we're here. Um, Chad, Garrett, George, Tim. Good morning. Good morning from Montreal, Tim. I don't think is that where you usually are. Um, Garrett asked how Biddy is doing. He's doing okay so far today. The main thing I think about Biddy right now, for context, Biddy is my older cat here, 16, 16 and a half years old. He has uh, recently was diagnosed with intestinal lymphoma. And so he has been going through some treatments and uh, hasn't had much of an appetite for a while. And so Garrett, I'm saying that because I'm always happy when Biddy does have a bit of an appetite. And today he did eat a little soup for breakfast, a little cat soup for breakfast. And I'm hoping he'll eat a little bit more later on today. Hopefully a lot more. He had a good eating day the other day. So uh, we're, we're keeping close contact with him. And Megan has been really good at feeding him. He's actually been more receptive to Megan feeding him because I've been giving him the pills. So I don't think he's as happy with me right now. Uh, Chris, Chad. Chad says, congrats on the new um, Stillmeyer products today. Oh, Val is joining me from my hometown in Richmond, Virginia. Thanks for joining me today for us today, Val. Um, Tony, Ian. Ian says he's joining from his classroom where he's setting up for the school year this year. He says he already put in his order for role player and risky rewards along with tapestry, plans employees, two copies of my little side with pie in the sky and for, with a uh, for side and this in the, for his future game club. Ian's working on a game club for his school right now. Miles is here, my friend and red rising artist, Miles. Uh, Miles's birthday was yesterday and we'll get to celebrate a little bit with Miles tonight at game night. Happy birthday, Miles. Um, uh, I'm so happy that you are here in St. Louis and so happy to have our friendship form over the last few years. And I'm so grateful for your work on Red Rising. It's been um, a huge contribution to the game. Uh, Alan says he's driving to Gen Con right now, so he's listening to this. Uh, <laughs> he's posting this at a pit stop. Um, well, yeah, Miles' art actually is on Risky Rewards as well, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but just a quick flash of Miles' art there on one of the new, or the new mini expansion for Rolling Realms. Um, I had something else to say there about what Alan said. Oh yeah, Gen Con. So quick quick update for Gen Con. Uh, it may be obvious, I am not at Gen Con. I'm in my normal home office here in St. Louis. Our team, or a lot of my team members are at Gen Con. Susanna, Dave, Alex, uh, a huge demo team is there at a, a, our big booth that we share with Meeple Source at Gen Con. So if you're at Gen Con, please go celebrate there, have fun there. Um, if you're not at Gen Con, that's okay too. You can join me. I'm, I won't be at Gen Con. And there are lots of things that you can do even if you're not at Gen Con. Um, so just wanted to mention that real quick. And all the product, or the products that I'll talk about today, they are, are available at Gen Con. Um, sorry, my sticky note isn't working here. Chad says he wants to buy the Expeditions mat just to hang on his wall. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. I think it is wall worthy, Chris. All right, Chad, sorry about that. And Chris says, if I were to order the champion subscription as part of an order, would anything in that order get the discount right away? It should. That is how our website is designed, how our web store is designed and set up. If that doesn't happen, just you can still complete the order and just email contact at stonemeyer.com and let them know that you should have gotten the discount and we can fix that retroactively, but it should. That's how it's set up to, to work, Chris. Good morning, Blake, good to see you, and Danny from Belgium, good to see you both. So let me hold up one of the big new products today. I'll, I'll share, I'll talk about the new products for a minute, and then I'll get back to questions. So one of the big new products is a giant rubber play mat for expeditions. Um, this has been in the works for a little while. The art is huge, so Jakob had a big project here uh, for this play mat. So you can see it is three by three feet, which I think I noted as around, what, 93 centimeters? I may be way off there. Three feet, three by three feet. Um, it is designed to, it, it's double-sided. I'll mention why it's double-sided in a second, but here's the side that shows the setup hexes. Uh, they're, they're subtle because you don't, once you put the, the locations on them, 
You don't really need to look at the outlines of the hexes. They also have very small north, central, and south. So you don't need to look at base camp anymore to decide where the tiles go. You just place them on the hexes. It also has spaces for the cards to remind you that cards need to go there. It has a little space for base camp at the bottom. We didn't put any other graphic design on it because it's kind of flexible based on how many players you have. I've designed it uh, to be big enough to hold five players. It might even hold six players in case we add a player count in the future. And uh, yeah, so this side is designed to be to set up expeditions. And why do you even care about it, a rubber play mat? Not everyone does. You don't need this, but it is a little bit nice for, for setup. And neoprene makes it a little bit easier to pick up cards and to tuck cards. So this is one way that uh, using this makes it easier to tuck cards under your player mat and also just to pick up cards from the board. Now, when I got this art from Jakob and I was looking at it, originally it was a one-sided play mat. And I realized if we're printing on one side, why not also just print on the other side because the art is spectacular and it's, I don't know, I, I, I love this illustration and I think it would work really well for any like Cthulhu Mythos game or any sci-fi game or any game with mechs exploration. I think it works really well for those themes. And so I wanted to print a side where it doesn't have the graphic design so you can use it for other games too. It can be a, just a play mat that you can use on your table if you really like the art as much as I do. So that's why we went with a double-sided mat here. Also, we're doing something different with this mat than we've done in the past. This is a method that we'll use in the future. Instead of rolling, like you saw me unroll it there a second ago. Um, in the past, when we've had big mats like this, like the tapestry mat, we've shipped it in a big tube. Um, but that isn't really, it isn't eco-friendly and it isn't really consumer friendly either because uh, you, whenever we ship it in that big tube, you can't put anything else in the order. It's not like we can fold up that tube and put it in a box. And so what we tested is, I asked Panda, can we flat pack this? We fold it up kind of in the shape of a, of a game box, um, or is it flexible enough to fold up? And it is. And, and what we tested is, does it leave any lines when you unfold it? And we tested it and found that it does not. You can, you can fold this thing up and then unfold it, and it's fine. It doesn't leave those creases, is the, the word I'm looking for. So. Um, it's not, it's not in a tube anymore. We were actually able to save you some money as well. You don't, you don't have to pay for shipping by itself. You don't have to pay for the, the cardboard tube. And it's more eco-friendly because we don't have the cardboard tube. So that's a method we're going to be using from now on. It's also a little bit more retail-friendly because we can actually ship these, uh, sell these to retailers if they want them. This is uh, still not in the works, but it's, in, it's being shipped right now, freight shipping. So this is a pre-order product. So anything that you order with the neoprene play mat or the natural rubber play mat, it isn't neoprene. Um, won't ship until September, uh, but it is coming soon. We've already made it. We're just freight shipping right now. If you're at Gen Con, we have a few advanced copies there. So you might be lucky enough to get one of the first copies if you're at Gen Con. I talked a very long time about this mat. Let me come back to Rolling Realms in a minute. Actually, the one other Expeditions thing, I'll mention it up front, is that we do now sell the plastic minis, the five plastic minis by themselves, the five mechs on, on each of our web stores. They are available now in somewhat limited quantities because we only make so many of the, the mechs. But if you're a painter and you want those to paint, they are on our web store now. Okay, before I get to Rolling Realms, let me look at the back of the comments to see what I am missing here. Um, Jim says, can all the Rolling Realms items be picked up at Gen Con? Uh, these things, these items, the, the play mat and the, uh, the, the, the new realms are available at Gen Con. Not for pickup exactly, like you can't order on our web store and select pickup at Gen Con. You just have to go to Gen Con and buy them from, from the booth if you want them there. Justin says, when do you expect the Expedition's Rolling Realms promo to ship? Ordered a bunch today and that one is still marked as pre-order. Justin, thanks for the heads up about that. Let me send a quick note to our, um, it, it, it's already available. It should, it's a, it should be a launch product. So I'm gonna note that to our, our uh, web store, web designer. Uh, so that is available right now. It, it should ship at the, at the same time as you ship any other product right now. Uh, Expeditions promo realm from pre-order to launch. That's a good question, Justin. I'm glad you asked that. Um, yeah. Steven says, I don't need a play map, but I'll order a set of expedition themed beach towels. This would be a, uh, a bit of a scary beach towel to have, although I do, I, I love the art. It would be cool to have. Maybe one for each faction. 
Casimir says, will the expedition's map keep me warm if I find myself stranded in northern Siberia? We cannot guarantee that, Casimir. I would not guarantee, I would not recommend getting stranded in northern Siberia. Uh, Josh is here. Josh is headed to Gen Con right now. I hope you have a great time there, Josh. Blake says, do you have a photo of Expedition's Matt set up and ready for five-player play? I don't, but I should. I should have had that ready today. But I'm going to work on that this afternoon. I'll set up the game on the play mat so we can have it out there. Uh, uh, just, yeah, that's a great idea. I don't have it right now, but I will take that photo later today. Quinn says he recently played My Little Scythe with his son and a five-year-old. He is very bright and he almost beat me. That's really cool. What other games of, of your own or from anyone would you like to see a junior version of? Quince, I have to be honest, that isn't something I think about very often. I know I need to think about customers that are not me and think outside of myself, but because I don't often um, play games with, with youngins, it isn't something I think about all that often. Um, I think I do have a list of games that play for, uh, for different age groups. Let me look at my shelf right now to see what pops out as a game that could work, that I enjoy at uh, lower, people who are maybe still learning to read, um, now, the only one that I see right now on my shelf that might jump out, uh, my, I'm looking at my more complex shelf, is Mysterium Park. Might be a little spooky for a five-year-old, though. But it is completely language independent. It could work for that purpose. Uh, Chad says, I don't know if anyone's noticed this, but the card sleeves that I use tend to get staticky and the cards twist on top of each other. I've seen that, too, with card sleeves. I found that rubber mats really cut down on the static in the sleeves. That's really neat. I hadn't thought about rubber mats having that impact on static. Uh, Chris says he was looking at a bunch of articles about the new Disney Lorcana TCG that's coming soon. Trading card games, TCG. Lots of interesting information. Here's a link. Yeah, I've been following it for a while now, Chris. I'm really curious about it. I'd love to do a draft of it or something like that. That's how I usually play Magic now. Uh, good morning, Mark. Good to see you here. Um, let's see. Ian says this showcase wall has a, a bunch of Stomeyer games on it. Yeah, I've seen a photo of that, Ian, and I love your, the idea of having a showcase wall where you showcase specific games each month for your gaming group to see and for you to admire and see. Jim says, are you staggering the available at Gen Con per day? Um, we certainly do not. Tr we try not to encourage foot races. Um, most of our products are not very limited. We do have limited numbers because we air freighted the in some, some uh, expeditions play mats. I believe they're staggering them, but I have very little to do with the Expeditions booth. Um, that's that's run by my coworker, Dave. So I don't know, but I'm guessing that's how they're doing it. That's kind of standard best practice at Gen Con, staggering products. Um, Kevin has a question about a code name. Kevin, let me try to answer this in a generic way because I don't talk about specific code names. Uh, he says, for products, do we reveal and then ship approximately a month later? So Kevin, that is our standard model. Uh, I, I, I can't reveal uh, at this point how that'll work for specific games, but our standard model, yes, is to reveal the product and talk about it and then start shipping it right away. There are a few products that we don't specific, that we vary from that a little bit. Like for Expeditions, we really wanted to get demand right for it. Um, and it was really hard to estimate demand for it. So we did pre-order instead of launch. Um, but yeah, but that's something that uh, the, most products are going to be launch products. Some of them will be pre-order pre products where we open a pre-order at the very beginning of production for that product. Um, okay, Carl, it sounds like Garrett shared the rules. Yeah, they're in the living rule book, Carlos, for risky rewards. So let's talk about Rolling Realms for a minute because we do have th uh, four new Rolling Realms products today. Three of them are promo realms. There's Lost Ruins of Arnak. Here we go. Start with that one. I love Lost Ruins of Arnak. This is a great realm. It was designed by the designers of Lost Ruins of Arnak. We have Millennium Blades. This is a really unique realm in that um, you can actually create numbers bigger than the dice. You can create numbers up to nine here. You need to create numbers up to bigger than nine uh, following some, some new twist on the rules in Millennium Blades. Here, I'll show the Lost Ruins of Arnak realm as well. Here's what that looks like. It kind of follows the... Um, and it's not the dungeon track, but the, uh, the the exploration track on the far right of the board on Lost Ruins of Arnak. You have that one. And then finally, all these are some of my favorite games, but Role Player is probably the game that gets to the table the most out of this pack. Role Player, we used the um, the alignment system to design, to inspire this realm in Role Player. It feels a little bit like the, the Expeditions realm as well. Uh, I... 
I am playing a game or playing a round of Rolling Realms today, this afternoon at three o'clock St. Louis time on the Rolling Realms Facebook group and then later on YouTube. I will showcase these realms there, but uh, but I won't be playing the, them yet because no one has them yet. So I'll wait a few weeks before I actually play with these realms. The other new Rolling Realms products is a bit of a surprise. This is the Risky Rewards mini expansion. This is designed by Ryan and Corel. And this is a different type of promo. So this isn't a promo realm. This is, it's, it's a little hard to describe, but it's basically a way that you can gain bonuses each round. Um, and if you don't use those bonuses, you get part of a star. So at the beginning of each round, if you're using risky rewards, you select two random rewards. And here's an example here. Here are two of the rewards. They look complicated here, but you really don't need to pay much attention to the text. Uh, we've tried to feature what happens in the icon itself. And there's a quick summary of what it does here. And during the round, you can use these rewards one time, one time per player, if you'd like. Uh, whenever you want, one time per player. So for example, this one's a little shorter. This one says, uh, if you decide to use this ability, you use both rolled numbers in the same realm. So you don't have to spend three pumpkins to do this. You can just use both th both of the rolled numbers, not just any number, but both rolled numbers in the same realm. And when you do that, you'll you'll check it off on this box. You'll, you'll right there, you'll, you'll check it off to show that you've used it. At the end of the round, if you haven't used it, you gain 0.3 stars. You gain a little bit of, of a bonus there for not using it. And that reminder is also up here at the top. Uh, and so there are six of these special re rewards. And so the, the core way to play, the standard way to play is each round you have two different uh, pairs of these rewards to choose from. So it actually makes the game, that's a, sl a very slight addition to the decision space, but it makes it also a little bit easier, a little bit uh, easier to fully fill out a realm basically if you're looking to do that, as I am always looking to do in Rolling Realms. Uh, yeah, this was fun to be a part of. I'm not the designer of it, but I was in, I kind of paid attention to, to the development of it because I really wanted to, to not add too much mental overhead to the game. That's one of the, the fun things about Rolling Realms, where there's lots of things to think about, but it isn't mentally taxing. Otherwise, I wouldn't have played 53 games of it already. So, Risky Rewards, really, really neat addition to Rolling Realms. I'll be playing with that soon as well. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Carlos says, oh, so he, I, Carlos had a question about risk rewards. There it is right there. Um, Chris says, I'm guessing you pulled those couple of realms off your web store from, from Rolling Realms that had issues with the dry erase markers. Yeah, we had two realms, Parks and Biddy and Walter, that had some issues with the dry erase coding. Uh, the coding wasn't properly applied. Um, I found with some copies of it, it is fine, but it's not fine universally. So we did pull them from the web store. Panda is reprinting them with a proper coding and they'll be back on our web store in a few months. Uh, yeah, probably uh, October. I think October is what we're aiming for. Carol from the mill is on her way to Gen Con right now. Uh, Tara says, uh, will the champion discount be usable at Gen Con? I'm hoping to score expeditions on that and some Rolling Realms packs. Tara, that's a great question. We would like that to be possible in the future, but all of the products that are at Gen Con are actually sold by Meeple Source. They aren't sold directly by Stonemaier Games. Um, that's how Meeple Source can attempt to break even on a very large expense at Gen Con. Of course, we contribute to paying for the booth too, but it's still a huge expense for Meeple Source. So champion discounts don't apply since it isn't Stonemaier Games that is selling the products. Um, you do save on shipping, like you don't have to ship anything. I, and uh, yeah, so. But uh, I will say this to any champion who is attending Gen Con, um, hopefully this doesn't cause too much trouble for anyone. But uh, if, if it's really discouraging for you to buy a product without the champion discount at Gen Con, uh, let me know afterwards. Let me know how much you paid for the products and how much you would have saved as a champion. You can just email me and I'll send you a little gift card to our web store to hopefully make up for at least part of or maybe all of that difference. Um, if it doesn't make a, if it's just, you know, a promo realm and you're saving 50 cents or you're not saving 50 cents, um, it, the shipping way more makes up for that. But, uh, but if it doesn't feel free to let me know, I, I really do appreciate champions and I, I want champions to feel like they're supported even when they're buying products, uh, not exactly from Stomire games at places like Gen Con, cause it'll, it'll feel like you're buying from Stomire games, even though you're actually buying from Meeple source there. So feel free to email me. I'm at jamie at stomiregames.com afterwards. 
if, uh, if that's important to you and I want to support you in that way with a gift card. Mark says Millennium Blades is the first promo realm that doesn't have hearts as a benefit. Let's see about that. Yeah, we try to have all the resources as benefits. That's kind of evolved as a design philosophy for it. Yeah, you're right, Mark. No hearts as benefits on Millennium Blades. Yeah. Uh, and I think there's another realm that doesn't have coins as a benefit, which is really tough when you don't have coins as a benefit. He said, now, oh, it's Terra Mystica, yeah. And Mark says, now waiting for a pumpkinless realm to complete the trifecta. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's something that we, we don't do anymore, but um, I think maybe subconsciously that was a way to balance out the fact that there weren't any coins in Terra Mystica. Val says that she'd love to have a kid's version of Wingspan, maybe having the same cards or have an expansion for the base game that could simplify the game. Val, this is something that we've kept in mind for a while, uh, and we, we're working on something. I can't reveal yet exactly what it is, but we're working on something that will be more, I'll say more uh, beginner friendly and more language independent for Wingspan. Uh, Paul says, this, it's amazing that Rolling Realms is turning out to be one of the more expensive games I own because we keep having all these promo realms. Uh, I love the constant w wave of new realms to use. This is one of the truly good things to come from COVID. Yeah, not a lot of good things came from COVID, Paul, but I'm glad that you said that. I'm, and and uh, COVID, I, I would definitely would not have designed Rolling Realms were it not for COVID. Wouldn't have thought of designing something like that that can be played at any time that's inf infinitely scalable like that. And Paul, I do want to say, I know... Rolling Realms can add up now because of all the promo, promo realms. The intention is not for, not for anyone to buy every promo realm. I'm sure there are people out there with a budget that they can do so, but that isn't the intent. I'm not trying to sell everyone hundreds of dollars worth of things for Rolling Realms. I'm hoping to put out enough promo realms that, uh, that you can pick and choose the ones that are interesting to you, either thematically or mechanically. Yeah. Uh, Julie echoes the, the comment about Wingspan. She says, I agree this would be great. Wingspan is too long and text heavy, so the length of the game, too, is a factor for my new reader, but he would love to play. Quinn says, I know someone mentioned Lorcana, Disney Lorcana. I don't know much. I don't know how much you know about the lawsuit and was wondering about your thoughts. Yeah, I followed the lawsuit a little bit. Um, I really don't know. I mean, I, I've, I've read a few articles on it, basically. So for those who don't know, for Disney Lorcana, there is a lawsuit against them by Upper Deck. And the story is from Upper Deck that Upper Deck hired someone to design a game for them, a trading card game. And then that person, I believe that person quit. Um, I don't think they were fired. I think they, they, they quit. And then they, the uh, Upper Deck is alleging that that person went to Disney or went to, uh, um, not Disney, went to Ravensburger with the same game and just put the Disney theme on it because Robbins Berker was wanting to make a Disney themed TCG. And so uh, Upper Deck is alleging that this person took something that they paid them to work on, that they paid them to create, and uh, that that person shouldn't have been able to take that over to, to Robbins Berker. Um, I don't know if I have any thoughts uh, because I don't have all the facts really. That's just what's been alleged. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all I can say, I, th I think about it. I don't have any insider information about it. And if I did, I, I couldn't share it anyway. Gordon says that he has bought all the promo realms of Rolling Realms. I appreciate anyone who does that too. As long as it brings you joy, Gordon, that's what's important to me. And as you've noticed, whenever we release new promo realms for Rolling Realms, we put all Rolling Realms products on sale on our web store. We put them on a 10% sale. Champions get another 20%. So everything's at on a 30% discount for Rolling Realms over the next few days. And then that'll happen again when we re re release new promo realms in the future. Trishul says, Did you, do you advise Meeple Source on their component upgrades for your games? Uh, I do not. That's a, they're completely independent of us. Um, I am friends with Meeple Source uh, folks, Cynthia and Chris. And so the, the one thing I do for them that I don't necessarily do for other third party creators is I often give them a little bit of a heads up. If we have a new product coming up, I let them know what's in that product just a little bit. I, I try not to give them too much of a competitive edge because we have no, we're not getting royalties from them. Um, they're just friends in the industry. And I, I feel like there are a lot of friends in the industry who are third party creators, but I do give them just a little bit of a heads up because they are wonderful partners of ours in terms of selling promos, um, that we do create and working with us at Gen Con for the booth, which is a lot of work. I really appreciate Cynthia and Chris and Richard and, uh, my team and the demo team, everyone who's there at Gen Con, uh, supporting everyone who stops by the booth over the next few days and everyone who signed up for Stillmeyer related events. 
Uh, Juicer says, what if Wingspan had small promo packs like Rolling Realms or Tapstry and others too? You know, we've, we've largely moved away from the promo strategy. We fully embraced it for Scythe. And I think people had some fun with it for Scythe, but I think it's, uh, it became a lot. Like it, be it just became a lot to track down, getting promos from in different ways. Uh, and yet it's a strategy that we've embraced for Rolling Realms. Um, so I don't know. That, that's something that we've considered a little bit, doing like mini expansions for, uh, for Wingspan. And the one that I'd really love to do, the one that's come up a lot, is do, to do a promo pack of Extinct Birds for Wingspan. You know, 12, 15 cards, extinct birds, just do a little promo pack. It's just cards, no new rules, or if there is, they can fit on a, on a card or a little piece of paper. So I'd love to do that for Wingspan at some point, whenever Elizabeth wants to, if, if and when Elizabeth wants to do that. Let's see, I missed a few comments here. Um, Danny says, do you have plans for a box that can contain all published Rolling Realms? Danny, yes, yeah, we announced this actually last month. That is Rolling Realms Redux. It is a new core set of Rolling Realms that will come out around this time next year. And it is being, we'll put it in a box that's big enough and designed to hold all realms from Rolling Realms, both from Redux, the core game, and all promo realms. Chad says, a, a nice little uh, life update here. He says, I had mentioned a while ago that my wife and I started the adoption process. This is Chad speaking here. He says, tonight we, might, we have a Zoom call and we might find out if we are selected to adopt a little one wish us luck that's wonderful Chad. that's truly wonderful uh, i know you you know that i love hearing that news because i'm adopted and uh that's such a gift that you are potentially giving to a child and i hope you have good news tonight and if not i hope you have good news in the near future instead uh george says he's he's actively teaching expeditions i'd love to hear that thank you george for for teaching expeditions to others ian says are you going to continue the new promo realm release every two months going forward leading into redux next year to try and get all the previously hinted ones out before redux that's tentatively the plan yeah i would it's it's a lot i mean that that's a lot of realms to release in a in a period of a year what is that um 36 realms but it's kind of the goal um and if we don't make it that's okay too we can still release some of the promos that we've already made after um, after that as well. And even after Redux, we will have realms based on new games that we release. So there'll still be a few after that as well. Tyler says, super random thought. Have you ever cr considered creating a Stillmire Games polo shirt? I'm in the corporate world and can't go, can't go to work in a t-shirt. I am lucky that I work from home for my own company, so I get to wear t-shirts to work. And I totally get that, Tyler. We could, we totally could. Yeah, I, I, uh, I will, uh, I'll talk to Joe about that. That would be a fun thing to do. Um, here we I would say we spend the most time thinking about t-shirts for ambassadors and for champions but uh but we have plenty of champions now and you can be you might already be a champion for all I know Tyler I appreciate it if you are um so we might do we might do a year where we have a a polo shirt for champions a nice fitted polo I, I definitely like that style of shirt so yeah I love the idea thank you for mentioning that my friend Chance is here. He says, hope Gen Con is awesome for you this year. Really hoping Expedition gets the buzz it deserves. I hope so too. You know, there's a lot of champions, or I mean, uh, Expeditions, you know, it's launching right before and a lot of people have already gotten it, but hopefully there'll be some, still some people who are really excited to get their copies at Gen Con, that it'll be part of the Gen Con buzz. Um, I also had a great time last week playing Age of Innovation with Chance. Chance was very kind to share his new copy that he got very quickly. Uh, very early, almost uh, last week. So we played Age of Innovation. Age of Innovation is the follow-up to Terra Mystica. I played that for the first time last week as the Forest Felines. Other games I've been playing, real quick, are um, I played Ticket to Ride on Board Game Arena for the first time. Very nice implementation on Board Game Arena. And the game I played the most recently is Sagrada Artisans. We received this on Friday, and Megan and I have already played eight games of it. We're almost done with the, the campaign already of Sagrada Artisans. This is the legacy version of Sagrada where you're using a coloring book, book that, uh, that evolves each time you play instead of putting dice. You're using dice in the same way, but you're just not leaving them on your stained glass window as you do in normal Sagrada. We're having a lot of fun with that. Zach says, have you played Federation? I think MeepleSource has this as a Gen Con item and was considering buying, buying it. You know, I am not familiar at all with Federation, Zach. What is, what is that about? I, haven't, I don't think I've heard of that one. Oh, Jody has an adopted one too, now 13 years old. That's wonderful, Jody. Blake says, the Canada store has, has been sold out of signed cards for some time now. Time to fire up that marker. I signed a ton of cards recently, Blake. 
So I know we have them available. Maybe they're on the way to Canada. I'll, I'll open a quick note to Joe and Dave about signed, signed cards in Canada. I'll send the email after this, but I thank you, Blake, for the reminder about that. Uh, yeah, recently I signed a ton of cards. I signed a ton of cards for Gen Con for expeditions and then another 500 or so cards just for our web store. So it's possible they're on the way there, but just haven't, um, haven't been put into stock yet. George says, I'm wondering if you've ever thought about bundling card sleeves with your games. I think it's a win-win situation. Fans get sleeves without extra shipping. Your partner gets more sales and you make people happy. George, we definitely thought about it and talked about it. And it's something that we, we will think about and talk about in the future. Um, so it's a, it's a little difficult because we've tried to reduce plastic. or we are, we are trying to reduce plastic in our games. And there are games that I think need plastic. And for me, my philosophy on sleeves is if you are shuffling a deck of cards multiple times throughout the game, that's when it most needs sleeves. So if we ever had a deck building game where you're shuffling the, the same, I don't know, your own personal deck or a shared deck of cards multiple times in the same game, uh, I don't necessarily say that, think that necessi necessitates sleeves, but it increases the need for sleeves. If we did that, I would probably offer sleeves on our web store. Um, we don't currently have a game that does that where you need to shuffle all that often. So that's why we haven't offered sleeves yet. At the same time, George, you're right that uh, cutting down on shipping is another way to be eco-friendly. So maybe we should just offer sleeves on our web store as an option for people in general, uh, for people to consider. I think what people often ask us for is to make special sleeves for specific games, but we could just sell sleeves on our web store. Right? We, we know that our, our partner Panda makes them and we could definitely do that. The other tricky thing there is that different people like different types of sleeves. So if once we start selling sleeves, some people are going to ask us to make certain certain sleeves that are, you know, very specific. I don't even know the dimensions at this point offhand, but different people like different types of sleeves. And we also have multiple sizes of cards in our games. So it opens a whole can of worms if we do it, but it is something that we're thinking about. I think though the impetus for us to do it would be if we ever released a deck building game where you're shuffling your deck of cards multiple times within the same game. Yeah, that's my current thought on it, on it, but I'm open to learning more and hearing what people want about that. Krista says, any plans to include a Realm randomizer on the Stonemaier app? Krista, that's a great question. We don't currently have that on the app. Currently, it's just a, an app for uh, for scoring games and saving your scores. But uh, but we really should consider that. That's a, that's a great idea, I think, to do that rather than having to shuffle them up every time you play. I'll think about that. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that. Trishul says, what's the coolest component upgrade that another company has come up for one of your games? Ooh, the coolest component upgrade. Hmm. That another company has thought of. I, I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of stuff, especially for Wingspan. There's a lot of cool stuff for Wingspan and uh, and Scythe. Like whoever thought of the, the factory miniature to put on the, on the middle of the board, really cool idea there. Adds a, a nice physical presence to the middle of the board. That might be up there as one of my favorites. But I was going to mention for expeditions too. People have been really creative coming up with interesting attachments to the playmat, and I don't know if they're necessary. I don't think they're necessary, but they do look cool, and I've been impressed by the creativity there. Let me. So I do see a bunch of questions. I will probably just focus on questions today. Let me see if I'm missing anything from the newsletter real quick. So I've talked about the various surprises in the, new, in the newsletter, including the new rubber playmat for expeditions. Um, Yeah, let me, there isn't much else in the, in the newsletter and you have the link if you want to look at it. So let me focus on questions for the most part. I do, I'll mention that I had a chat with Andrew from Board Game Rundown, a, a YouTube channel. If you want to check out that chat, it went live yesterday. If you want to see a very recent chat with me about expeditions and other things. Also, recent viewing, um, we saw, uh, we're watching Ghosts right now on Paramount Plus and also Star Trek Strange New Worlds on Paramount Plus. And we saw the Barbie movie this past weekend and loved it. And I'm thinking if like one of the things that made Barbie so much fun is that we all dressed up in pink. The movie is much more, uh, much less superficial than just, just dressing in pink. There's some great messages in, in Barbie, but it made it a little extra fun to be there since we were all, everyone in the theater was wearing pink. So I was thinking about maybe doing something like that for expeditions, like have 
a day for expeditions where I encourage people to dress up as an explorer for when they play and share those photos. But I don't know if that's tacky or gimmicky or if that would be fun to do. Let me know your thoughts. If, if dressing up for any of our games or me officially encouraging people to do that would be fun to do at any point. Um, it's obviously we can't all be in the same place when we do it, but people could focus on that at their upcoming game night. Like, I don't know, dress. Yeah, I was thinking dress like an explorer, basically, or dress like an adventurer. Blake says, do you foresee the promos for Rolling Realms uh, eventually ending and being done like Scythe and Tapestry, or is it the dream to just keep going and going? So Blake, what I'm thinking right now is that I, I don't have any plans to make more promos based off of non stelmeyer games, but I do plan, and we've already created a bunch of them that we haven't released yet. So this is uh, something that will not be apparent to you until at least a year from now, I think. But I do intend to continue to make promo realms for each new Stillmire Games release that, that that we put out there. Garrett echoed that he would love to have a Stillmire Games polo as well for uh, for him. He mentioned for golf or disc golf. I like the idea of using it for disc golf. Ian said the same thing. Okay, people are loving the the, uh, the idea of a polo shirt for either ambassadors, champions, or just everyone in general. Victorious Victoria says the same thing. Um, awesome. Uh, Paul says, I spoke with Andrew Bosley at Dice Tower East, and he said you were one of the easiest designers to work with. I love his art. Tapestry is an all-time favorite. That means a lot coming from Andrew, because Andrew is also wonderful to work with. He's, he's a lot of fun to work with. Very professional. Um, stays on schedule. Very good at communicating. And also very, very creative. Like he, Andrew's one of the artists where I'm able to say, okay, I need this specific image. Or I can say, I just need an image based on these words. Uh, or... Do a little bit of world building, Andrew. Do a lot of world building. Uh, Andrew's very flexible to work with in that way. Uh, yeah, that's, that's fun for him to hear. Tyler also says he wants a polo. Hey, everyone's loving the polo idea. I'll make a note about this for the uh, the, the thumbnail for this video. Uh, George mentioned need more sign cards. I think that's what George is referring to. Sign cards in the, in the, the Europe store as well. I know I signed a bunch. I, I, I don't know why they're not there yet, but maybe they are waiting to consolidate them with other packages from the U.S. Jackie says, are any of your other games easy to play solo like Rolling Realms? Rolling Realms is super easy to play solo, um, even without using the Automa, because, you know, Jackie, as you know, you can just play against me if you want um, any of the videos that I've made about it. I would say, so I, do, I don't play, I'm, I'm not, uh, I don't do much with the solo modes for our games at all. I'm, I'm the multiplayer designer or developer for our games. However, I will say that I have played the solo mode for Viticulture, and it was very easy. It was a vi it's a very easy automa to run. I think the other automas, once you know them, they're easy, but they are fairly complex to get into. But Viticulture, I found very easy to operate. So I'd recommend that one, Jackie. If you have the, if you have Viticulture, try out the solo mode. I think it's really well done and, and very friendly to people who aren't used to playing with a solo automa system. Gordon says, I already made two orders in the Australia store and could not add a signed card because it's been out of stock for many months too. Okay, out of stock there. Out of stock everywhere but the U.S. I will, so I'll either make sure they get back in stock. It'll take a little while to get them from the U.S. I'll either find out that they're already on the way, which would be great news, or that I need to sign a bunch more cards and I'll take care of that. So thank you all for mentioning that. Um, yeah. Let's see. Chad says, I was a tad disappointed that the friendly local game store of Expeditions isn't until September, but I worked with Susanna to get a demo copy uh, for the shop. That's a great idea. It's fine for, to have a demo copy. Chad, the reason we didn't have, we don't have, it, it's, you know, a little bit later than normal for the retail release is because for Expeditions, we did the thing that you're aware of where we let retailers order the special deluxe version of the game. So retailers are able to sell the Ironclad edition along with the standard edition. And we... Ended up selling more ironclads than than we originally forecasted for, and so it took some extra time to make those ironclad additions to get them to uh, to retailers. And we found rather than shorting retailers on release day, it's much better just to push back release the release day so they can have everything they actually want by that day, and that includes the ironclad edition. So um, it is a little bit later than normal, a few weeks later than normal, but uh, it's coming up on September twenty second. And uh, we're excited that we can offer that Ironclad edition to retailers at that point. Mark says, any updates on the Euphoria and Ignorance is Bliss expansion reprints? Uh, yeah, they're, they're being reprinted right now. I think they'll be back in stores by the end of 2023. Kind of late 2023 is what I'm expecting right now, Mark. 
Steven, Steven says, as a designer, how do you feel about the Ostertag, Rosenberg, and Knizia strategy of pumping out new games that are relatively small iterations on previous designs? It seems like some designers do this, others don't. Hmm, interesting question. Um, so Rosenberg, so I... I don't know how much of this is the designer versus the publisher, honestly. So like there are a bunch of different versions of patchwork, right? Where they're either, I, compl they're almost completely identical other than the art. That is almost certainly the publisher, not Uber saying, hey, go make a Halloween version of, of patchwork. Um, and the publisher probably wouldn't continue to do that if they didn't see that there was demand for it. It isn't something that I try to do as a designer or at Stonemaier Games, um, a lot of overlap between those two things, me and, as a designer and Stonemaier Games, uh, because I figure if, like if we had Patchwork, for example, as one of our games, and Patchwork already exists, I, I, I don't necessarily think there needs to be, well, no, I don't want to speak about Patchwork, because again, obviously, they've made versions of Patchwork that people have bought and people have been excited about, and that's awesome. And also having like a, a, a new reskinned version of the game means that people who already have Patchwork don't feel like they need to get it at all. Um, but people who are new to Patchwork might find it as a like a shiny new thing that they can get and introduce them to Patchwork for the first time. It's a good excuse for them to try it. So in that way, I think it kind of works well. I don't know. I thought about this the most with Expeditions and Scythe, obviously, because I could have just reskinned re Scythe or made a new version of Scythe with new factions, maybe a new location. Um, but that to me just didn't like Scythe already exists. I, I, I don't want to just put out a new version of Scythe because it's already out there. And so I wanted to do something that feels like Scythe, that hearkens to Scythe, that winks at it, uh, but is, a, is an evolution of, of the game in many different ways. A, a, a true sequel in my, in my opinion. So that's my philosophy in general, I think. If, so, if I feel like something already exists, whether it's a Stillmeyer game or a game from another company, I don't want to just put another version of that out there because it does already exist. I want to put something new out there in the world. Arama says, with Expeditions, Red Rising, and Wingspan having expansions in the works, have you thought of creating expansions for Libertalia and Viticulture World? Both are super fun games. Also, th thanks, Jamie, for, for such an amazing design game in Expeditions. Thank you, Aramis. I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying Expeditions. Viticulture World is a weird one because Viticulture World is an expansion. So I don't think, we've never done an expansion to an expansion before. Uh, there's so much replayability in Viticulture World with the, the different continents that I don't think we'll be adding onto it. Um, Libertalia, I am hoping to do something small for it. It isn't entirely expansion friendly because we're kind of capped at, at the 40 characters that are in the game. But there are a few areas that we can dabble with uh, expansion content and I, I have something I I think that will that will work on for for that game yeah uh, Corlin says I can't believe I won't see you at Gen Con I hope you I hope to make you guys proud what is the new plastic bag material used in expeditions yeah I'm sorry I'm not a, at Gen Con Corlin but I hope you have fun there uh, the plastic bag material that we've been using for a while now in our games is uh, is a compostable material um, the problem with it that we found though, so it is an Expeditions, but we're gonna probably stop using it for a little while because it seems to tear a little bit too easily at the top. Um, so compostable is good, biodegradable is good, and not everything that's biodegradable is also compostable, but these bags happen to be um, compostable. But, uh, but yeah, they also need to be durable. They need to serve their function in the game. So we've really tried to cut down on plastic in our games and to only include plastic that is necessary and usable, plastic that won't just be thrown away. So uh, Expeditions might be the last game for a little while that uses those bags, um, and we'll continue to test other products that hopefully hold up a little bit better. Krill says, I don't have a desire to buy sleeves from a publisher except when a game has lots of cards in many different sizes. For some games, it's really cool to have a custom sleeve pack that has all the right sizes in the right amounts. It's certainly something that we can do, uh, Corel. Um, and I appreciate that feedback. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. I'll make a note about that. Uh, Corlin says, will all the Rolling Realms promo packs be available at Gen Con? I think they're there, but I'm not 100% sure. One thing that I've asked my coworker Dave to do in the future, Corlin, to help answer questions like that is to create a master Google Doc that we can link to on the events and conventions page of our website where people can... Um, 
uh, can see exactly what products that we'll have at the convention or the event. So they can, because I don't even know I'm, I'm separated from, from that information. Um, so I, I would, I would be, I would reference that Google doc too, so I can know. Yeah. Nick says, speaking of sustainability, have you seen the Rewood? Yeah, from Czech Games Edition. That is a really cool product uh, or com material that they're using that uh, is moldable like plastic, but it uses mostly uh, recycled wood products, which I think is really cool. I'm very curious about it, uh, Nick, and, uh, and have asked our manufacturer to look into it as well. Chat says, ever considered a top 10 fun or odd rules? An example is the Orcs and Warhammer 40K. If they're painted red, they can move faster. Oh, that's really cool. I like that, Chad. Uh, that's a tough list to come up with, but, uh, but I'll make a note of it. Fun, odd rules in games. Yeah, that's cool. I think a lot of them that I've seen people mention are either tiebreakers or uh, starting players, how to choose the start player. But I like leaving it open to other rules as well. Dominic says, I was actually thinking of getting the Scythe faction shirts off Meeple Source and having each player wear their faction shirt for game eight of our Fenders campaign. That's awesome, Dominic. I love that idea. I've seen a few groups of people do that, and it looks really cool. I've seen groups do it for Charterstone, too. In fact, uh, I think that's like the, a great way to play Charterstone, that once you pick your faction or your, your charter, your color, you just wear that shirt every time you play. Um, yeah, I, I love that idea for a campaign game. Paul says he's currently on vacation at the beach, and one of our favorite games to play here is Azul. Is it, It's perfect to play outdoors since nothing can blow away. Do you have any favorite games that you can play outside? I do indeed, Paul. Let me see if I can pull up my list really quick. I did a list about this a little bit ago. I think I can find it for outdoor games. Let's see. Outdoor. Hmm, let's see. Picnic. I'm searching my channel for, no, it's not under Picnic. Outside? No, I don't have, the, I thought I made a list about this at some point. Um, I mean, Hive comes to mind. Block S can work for it. Yeah, games that can't, don't have components that can blow away, basically. Hive, Block S, what else do we play with this? Uh, oh, there's another block game where you're trying to match up with a partner. I forget the name of it now. It has a non-English name, I think. Um, I'm forgetting offhand. I'm sorry, I can't remember. But yeah, Blockus and, and Hive are two, two picks for outdoor games that can't blow away easily. Uh, Julie says that... Oh, Stephen and Julie both say that Red Rising solo mode is also really easy to play with. This answers a question that was asked a little bit earlier. George says, will the Ironclad editions for retailers have the number printed on them or are they part of, the, of a new batch? I believe all Ironclad editions have uh the uh an individual number printed on them yeah uh okay so ian has a question about solo because he plays all stonewire games only solo he's played viticulture red rising wingspan libertalia and expeditions and he says all are very easy to run Altama factory does a great job he says i'm a casual gamer who enjoys games in the two to three weight range great information here ian thank you for sharing that Steve, Steve says, sorry, I showed up late today. If I get extra plastic bags, I use them for other games. I don't throw them out. Steve, I love hearing that. I do the same thing. I have a big drawer of plastic bags, and I am glad to hear that um, about any, any plastic or any component as, as well. <laughs> so Trisha says, sleeves open a can of worms. Indeed, I for one like perfect fit sleeves, but it's hard to find ones that don't bend the cards, that prevent cards from sliding off a big deck, which strikes a good balance between avoiding glare and good clarity. Yeah, that is, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very tricky balance to find. And I find that different people have different preferences. Steven also mentioned Azul for Outdoors. That was, I think, the, the game that, um, I forget who asked the question now. Paul. Paul said he, he does have Azul outside. Paul also said that he likes Libertalia solo. Um, so yeah, we're nearing the end of the video. I'll recap what I talked about a little bit today. So we have, uh, and Paul also, Patrick says he likes the idea of the polo. I'll, I'll add that polo a few notes for Joe here. So again, the new products that we have on the web store today, the thing that I don't, the visual I don't have today is the, um, the plastic mix for expeditions. I also want to remind you that we have the vision friendly cards for wingspan, which are the friendliest, friendliest when you include them in an order with other stuff. Um, but the new Rolling Realms things today are the Risky Rewards mini expansion. 
Realms for Lost Ruins of Arnak, Role Player, and Millennium Blades. And then we also have the big double sided, flat packed, uh, double stitched on the edges for durability playmat for ex expeditions. That later on today, I will take a photo of the game set up on this mat. Uh, you can see the graphic design on this side. The back side doesn't have the graphic design, so you can use it for other games as well. I'm curious what you all think about that. Do you like that we made it double-sided? Do you think you will use it for other games or not? Um, it's good to know because it definitely made the mat a little bit more expensive to do that. Um, but after I saw the art, I was like, I can definitely see people, including myself, using this in other games. I don't want to make it only usable in Expeditions. Uh, and I think rubber playmats like this are best for games where you have to often pick up cards off the table. It makes them easier to pick up. Or where you're sliding cards under things. It, make it makes it easier to slide or tuck cards. Sam says, thanks for another awesome live stream. Thank you, Sam. I appreciate you saying that. Uh, Joe says, are all the Ironclad editions that are currently available first printings or some now a second printing? Really, it's, it's all one big first printing, uh, but divided into two waves. One wave that... Uh, so... Uh, I, I can't remember offhand what the second wave says. If we printed it as second printing or if we counted it as the first printing. I can't remember that. I think maybe we noted it as second printing. Um, and so that means the good thing about that is that the numbers reset. So we have another chance at getting a lower number if uh, if we do reset the numbers for a second printing. But I don't know offhand. I don't, I don't have a copy of that um, offhand, so I'm not exactly sure. Steve says, when is that playmat available? It's available right now on our web store, Steve. It's also at Gen Con, or some advanced copies are at Gen Con. It's available for pre-order now. It's We've already made it, but it's in freight shipping. So it won't ship until September, but it's not that far in the future. It'll ship in really just a few weeks, almost four or five weeks uh, for the playmat. Paul says, can't wait to see the mat all set up. He says, I would use the double side. Mark says, I will use both sides. That's great. Oh, and... Another mark here, uh, our replacement parts helper in the UK he says that mat is simply glorious. I'm glad you like it, Mark. Yeah, I, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Jakob worked really hard to make this mat beautiful for you, for you all, and I think he accomplished that goal. Chad says he also likes the, that we printed both, both side, sides. He says, I especially like that you chose a monotone painting for the art. I have uh, used really busy mats. Yeah, Chad, uh, Chad touches upon an important thing here. So the, the it's, you know, very purple, very purple mat here. If it had been a bunch of different colors, uh, I think, or even like a more, I don't want to say more detailed image, but an image with uh, details that would distract from the game, I probably wouldn't have made it double-sided. But because of the way the art turned out and because it is mostly purple, um, I think that makes it easier to put other games on it without distracting from the things that you need to see on those components. Greg says, I'm very ex excited for the Expeditions playmat, and I definitely intend to use it with other games. I'd expect that the playmat would tend to hold the tiles in place better than a tabletop, uh, less sliding around. Yes, uh, my experience from using the playmat, which is just very little, but uh, so far, because it, it's new to me too, it does make things less likely to slide around. It, there's a little bit of grip on the, uh, in kind of the fibers of the, the natural rubber play mat that we have. Gordon says, does the second printing of the numbered ironclad edition say it is the second printing? Otherwise, how will we distinguish between the two printings of expeditions? That's a good question, Gordon. Um, I, I, I am pretty sure it says second printing. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick while we're talking. I don't know if Joe's listening and knows the answer. Todd says, a great mat for travel as well. Um, Trishul says, has any company figured out a way to make play mats that are reconfigurable or joinable, perhaps using magnets along the edges? If there's any company to do it, I would say it's probably the company that makes too many bones because they use play mats in some very creative ways. Okay, let me see if I can look at the front of the box for the second wave or second printing of Expedition's Ironclad Edition. That's the question that seems to be asked right now. I'm pulling up something right here. I, I may not be able to find it easily, but I'm looking at what we're working on at Panda right now. Finished products. Here we go. Scythe, no, on Expeditions. 
I don't see anything yet. I'll keep poking around a little bit. Expeditions playmat. Here we go. Expeditions ironclad second. I'll try to flip over here. Okay. Let me see what I can see here. The box. Okay, here's the box. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to pull it up right now. Oh, on Pandas Online. Oh, there's a big download. Okay, this will take a second. I'll let you know after the, the download finishes. So I'm looking up right now. So we made the Ironclad edition of Expeditions in two waves. Um, overlapping waves, but two waves. With uh, some of them arriving you know, about a month ago for pre-order customers. And the second wave arriving in September for more pre-order customers. And also, um, also retailers. So I'm looking to see how the individual numbering works on that box. One more megabyte left. Let's see what it says. It says, I'm guessing it's going to say second printing. It does say second printing. It does indeed. Yes. So second printing. So that's how we'll know the difference. That means that the numbering will start over. So it won't be a, technically a, a first printing copy, even though it's kind of in the first printing, but it will give you a chance at a lower number, which is kind of fun. It, it is a printing of 7,500 copies, I believe, just like the first printing of, uh, of the Ironclad edition. All right. Uh, you know, I did talk about my, uh, my treat of the day. My treat of the day today, if you're ever in St. Louis, uh, I would highly recommend going to the farmer's market where I get this sandwich, but you can also go to a place called Fat Fox. It's a restaurant. It's a barbecue restaurant called Fat Fox, and they make, I have found, the best smoked mushrooms. And so today I'm going to eat the second half of a sandwich that I got from them from the farmer's market. I'm more excited about this sandwich than I am about chocolate, which is highly rare for me, but it is so good. That's the, the mushroom sandwich from Fat Fox here in St. Louis. And they're often at the Tuesday Tower Grove Farmer's Market in case you live in St. Louis. Highly, highly recommended. And they do sell out uh, of this sandwich, so I recommend getting it in the future. Jonathan, oh, one last question from Jonathan. Oh, two, two more questions here. Jonathan says, will the play map be compatible with any future expansions? Jonathan, I'm going to try my best to do that, but I also don't want to be confined by the playmat. I've only designed one expansion so far for Expeditions, and it's still in progress. That expansion is compatible with the playmat. Um, future expansions, I don't know exactly for sure, but there's a lot of extra space around the edges of the playmat. And the play that I say about the playmat is it's double-sided, so it's not doesn't have graphic design on the backside. So that backside will always be compatible with anything we put, anything we put out for expeditions. And there's a lot of room around the edges that makes it configurable for different player counts, and there's room for other components to go on the playmat for future expansion. So I would say it is expan future expansion friendly, but not entirely future expansion proof. Oh, Chad, the last question here from Chad. Have you received a batch of test prints for the fan art wingspan cards yet? If so, how are they looking? I have it. I only asked for an MPC for them, um, and I haven't received it yet, but I'm very eager to receive it. I, I'm really, really curious to see the fan art cards. Um, I don't know the timeline for that. I think I did ask Shannon about that recently. Let's see if I do have a timeline in my email for when I'll get a sample of it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know yet. I'm hoping soon, though. I am very excited to see. I'll ask for a timeline. Hope I'm not bugging Shannon to ask, but I'll, I'll see if he has a timeline for that. So yeah. Thank you all for joining me today for today's e-newsletter live cast. If you have any other questions, feel free to let me know in the YouTube version of this video. That's where I'll most easily see questions, but you can also ask them here, too. I should get an alert. I hope you have a great Wednesday, a great Gen Con if you're attending, a great non-Gen Con or Gen Can't if you're not attending, and happy playing Expeditions, happy getting the new promos for Rolling Realms. And maybe I'll see you today on the Rolling Realms Facebook group at 3 o'clock Central Time for a round live play of game 54, I believe. I'll see you then. Take care. Bye.